Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy, wonderful day in the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Michelle. So glad you're joining me. So glad you're feeling well enough to join me this morning. Good morning, Lizzie. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Celinda. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Colby. I'm glad you're all coming in this morning. Shift 9,974. 9, 9, hmm. Who is that? I would love to know your name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All coming in. Glad to see you coming in this morning. Wow, what a great chapter this one is. As we wait for just a few more. Good morning, Sarah Kokenauer. Good morning, all coming in this morning. Good morning, Lisa from Mississippi. So you stayed up. I know you worked last night. You must have stayed up to be with us this morning. Everyone grab your coffee and let's have our wonderful time together. I am so excited. This is a smaller, shorter chapter, but every word is so powerful. Don't forget, if you're in the California area, we will be in San Bernardino tomorrow and Sunday at the Rock Church. So excited to be with Pastor Dan and Pastor Jess Roth at the Rock Church on Waterman Avenue in San Bernardino, right off the I-10 freeway. Tomorrow's service is at 10 o'clock, and then there are two services Sunday morning. We'll be doing all three services. Looking forward to being with you. Good morning shift is our youth page. I switched over to mine. Great, I'd love to have you both. Awesome. Good morning, Karen. Glad you're joining us. This chapter, Karen, has some answers, I believe, to some of the questions that you had um, yesterday when we were going back and forth in a text. Um, yes, my church. Love it. Yay, Lizzie. So your church is The Rock in San Bernardino. Awesome. Well, I will see you there this weekend. I'm excited about it. And don't forget all that I will not be doing Bible study on the weekends, uh, especially over the next, uh, well, I, right now I can't see an end in sight to that because it looks like we're going to be going back to work, maybe not getting on an airplane for another month or so, but um, looks like we'll be working in the area. Um, this weekend will be in San Bernardino. The next weekend is Flow School, Prophetic Flow School. If you're not registered but you want to be, please call 918-639-1747. Or if you'd like to register to view the online School of Worship, uh, July 20th through the 24th. If you can't get here in person but you want to be a part of it, you can be now. We're trying to make that available for the first time ever, where you can actually view the school online and be a part that way. So you can call 918-639-1747 to register for the online school or for the in-person school or for the flow school, all coming up in the next two weeks. Good morning, Laura Kokenauer. Laura will be with us. Good morning, Lisa. I'm glad you're all doing great. Um, one of the ones that pulls up a chair to my table um, most mornings is Laura Schaefer out of Michigan, and she is in the hospital with their son Charlie this morning, uh, having a, a test done, and so please, please be praying for little Charlie. And also Sarah Horn is usually pulling up a chair with our group this morning, and she is in surgery because she dropped a knife on her foot a few days ago, and it cut the tendon to her big toe. So they're doing surgery to repair that. So please be praying for all of them. Continue to pray for Michelle as she is getting better and better and better in every day, getting better and better in every way in Jesus' name. Expecting that to be the case, Michelle, every day that you get stronger and stronger. I think we've given everyone four minutes time to come in. So let's begin with chapter 46. What an amazing chapter. Oh, the overthrow of Babylon is the title of it. The gods of Babylon. I think it's interesting to overthrow Babylon. We have to rid the nation. And that's what happens in the very first verse of the false gods to get America back in position. We're going to have to rid America of the false gods, the things that people have built an idol to things that people put their trust in things that they put their money in. These are the things that represent who your God is. Uh, where you put your attention, where you put your trust, where you put your money. That's, that's who you are uh, declaring that is God in your life. So let's look at this, the overthrow of Babylon. The gods of Babylon, Bel and ne Nebo, are bowed down and lowered to the ground. 
They haul away on ox carts their wobbling idols. They both stoop and bow down, and they are powerless to rescue their own images. They There they go, carried off into captivity. Now, the first thing I want you to notice, good morning, Margie, glad you're joining us this morning. And I am not crying, it's just my morning, the way I am in the morning with, with um, eyes. Here we go. This is what, a re first thing that jumped off the page to me was remember in Samuel chapter six, when I teach on invisible worshiper and addicted to his presence with Obed-Edom and how David the king had to become an invisible worshiper. The very first thing we know in that story was that um, David and the priests copied the ways world in how to handle the presence of God. They put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart pulled by oxen. Here you have that same reference here. They haul away on ox carts their wobbling idols. The worst thing we can do in our worship today is copy the world. God is not pleased with that. He, he is insulted by it, and we do not want God to be insulted by our national worship. So we must do it God's way. We cannot copy the world. You cannot be in the bars on Friday night, even if you're the singer, and singing all kinds of secular songs, and then the next morning get up and get on the platform and say you're a worshiper. That's filthy. It's filthy. You cannot be both. You've got to decide, are you going to serve the world? Or are you going to serve God? Are you going to be holy? Are, are you going to be unholy? Are you going to be righteous? Or are you going to be unrighteous? There is no way you can be both. And every one of us must decide. And that's what this chapter is all about. Listen to me, O Jacob's tribes, all the remnant of Israel. You never had to carry me, but I have carried you from birth. Wow. What an amazing statement. God is telling us. Good morning, Esther. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, all, all, all. So glad to see you all coming in this morning. I think I may have missed a few in there, but thank you all for joining. Good morning, DJ. Listen to me, O Jacob tribes, all the remnant of Israel. You never had to carry me. That's what he's saying. I am not a God who has to be carried. You don't have to carry me, but I've carried you from birth. From the moment you took a breath, I've been carrying you, God said. I supported you from the moment you left the womb. Even as you grow old and your hair turns gray, I'll keep carrying you. Wow. What a wonderful promise. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll never get just comfortable enough that we become roommates. He will always be carrying us. He will always be with us. He will always take care of us. Good morning, all who are joining me. Even as you grow old, I'll keep carrying you. I am your maker. I'm your caregiver. Michelle, isn't that a great promise? Not only did he make you, but he's been caregiving to you. Yes, God sent others to do so, but he's also doing it himself. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you carry us, that you take care of us, that you're our caregiver. That's the mother side of God, by the way the caregiver side of God. I will carry you and I'll be your savior. To whom can you compare me? The incomparable God. In one translation I was reading this morning said, try to describe me without dumbing me down. Try to describe me without making me less than I am. It's impossible because he is so great. We don't have high enough words, big enough words, awesome enough vocabulary unless you do it in tongues and even that won't suffice to reach the full height of who he is. Try to describe me, he says. Put me in words. Can you do that? No, we cannot. We try. We try, but we cannot because his awesomeness is greater than our language. His amazingness is greater than our ability to put him into words. Have you found someone else like me, he says. The wealthy pour out their gold, weigh out their silver in the scales, and have a goldsmith who they hire, who crafts it into a god. Then they bow down before it to worship. They lift it up on their shoulders and have to carry it. They set it on a stand, and there it sits. 
Unable to move from its place, when someone cries out to it, it never answers, it never saves anyone from trouble. He is saying, I'm the only God that you can cry out to, and I will answer you. I am the only God that when you cry out to me, I will save you from trouble. I will save you from trouble. You can cry out to me, he's saying. You can cry out to God right now, right where you are. Come on, let's just cry out. What would you ask him to do right now? Stretch your thinking. I'm going to show you my cup this morning. I grabbed it on purpose because of this chapter. Dream big. Think bigger than just right this moment. What do you want God to do? What do you want God to do? Colby, that's right. It would take eternity, and thank God we'll have an eternity to try to describe him. It will take eternity, and even then, it will go on and on and on. He will save us from trouble. Yes, I've been saved from trouble. Have you been saved from trouble? Patty, I see you're saying you've been saved from trouble. I have been saved so many times from trouble by our God who listens when I cry out, who hears me when I use his name, who, who favors me with a righteous judgment when I stand before the righteous God and the righteous judge. Remember the miracles. Now, this was an important statement I noticed when I was studying this morning. Keep this in mind and don't forget it. Take this to heart. You rebels. In other words, those you've turned your mind and your attention and your focus on someone else. That's called a rebel. And and I was listening to an old preacher yesterday preaching, and he was talking about the civil war going on. Now, this was years and years ago. And he was saying a civil war is coming to the church. And then he went on to say there's a civil war already going on inside of every Christian. Inside of every Christian, there is the gray matter of the mind trying to make God God fit into their thinking. And then there is the blue matter of the soul that's looking for revelation. He, he said it's time for the gray matter to surrender to the revelation of the Spirit. It's time for the gray matter of understanding and thinking and trying to put God in a box. It's time for the gray matter to surrender to the blue matter. The blue matter, what is that? Revelation, insight, Spirit God. Our Spirit God is calling us spirit spirit to spirit, heart to heart. He's looking for us to come in, come in and surrender and stop having a civil war within ourselves. He is saying in the name of Jesus, let the gray matter surrender to the blue of revelation, to the blue of the spirit. The spirit must be in control in the name of Jesus. Are you willing to stop the civil war inside of you by saying, I surrender to revelation. I surrender to the spirit. I surrender to the Spirit of God. My gray matter surrenders to the blue of the Spirit, to the blue of revelation. I hope that came out as clear as I understood it in my spirit. I wanted to make it clear to you. God does not want a people in a civil war. He does not want a church in a civil war. He wants us to learn how to surrender our way of thinking to his way of being, our way of having to understand it in the natural. He's saying surrender natural to the supernatural. Surrender trying to make it fit into your little box to the overwhelming depth of the in incomparable position of who our God is in the name of Jesus. Then he goes on to say, now we just read in Isaiah 43, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. But when he said that in Isaiah 43, he's talking about our stuff. Stop thinking about you and your past. Here he says, remember the miracles of long ago. In other words, think about me and what I've done. I want you to remember what I've done. I want you to go back and think about all the times I've delivered you and all the times I've saved you and all the times when you cried out to me, I was there for you. He said, remember the miracles of long ago. Acknowledge that I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, he says. I declare from the beginning how it will end and foretell from the start what has not yet happened. Karen, this is a lot of what we were talking about yesterday. Good morning, Mona. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Zida. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, all. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this is God. Try to 
Open your mind enough to understand that God is not uh, stuck in the box of past, present, and future. God is not stuck on our timeline. He is out of time. If there's a way to imagine that God is all past, present, and future. He is He is who was, and He is who is, and He is who will be. All at the same time, He is not stuck in linear time as we are. So he's saying, get out of the box of time and realize that from the beginning, I declared from the beginning how it will end. Why? Because he was already there. He was in the end already. And foretell from the start what has not yet happened. This is our God. He's telling us we have a good ending. We have a good, he has a good plan for us. We have a good purpose. We have a great destiny. We have an eternity. This is who our God is. This is what he wants us to know. Step out of your linear time and let me show you who I am. I decree that my purpose will stand and I will fulfill my every plan. I call that bird of prey Cyrus. We talked about him yesterday. Now he's still prophesying about Cyrus who is not even yet. And yet he is prophesying about him. Swooping in from the east from a distant land he came, came as if it's already happened because to God it already has. The man of my purpose I have spoken and yes, I will bring it to pass. I have formed my plan, and yes, I will do it. God says he has a purpose and a plan for you, and it's for good and not for evil. And God says you align yourself with me, and I will fulfill my plan for you. You cannot miss it. You cannot die too early. You cannot be sick and miss what I have planned. I've got a plan and a purpose for you, and you're going to fulfill it as long as you walk with me and be with me and stay in step with me and my rhythm and my purpose. I'm going to finish what I started in you. If you agree with God on that, say God's going to finish what he started in me. Come on, comment that. God's going to finish what he started in me. Listen to me, you stubborn ones, those that are still in a civil war, stuck in the gray matter, needing to surrender, who are far from righteousness. Now, I believe all of you are walking on the righteous side of God, but if you aren't, just stop and repent right now. Or if there's one, that one little part of you that's still stubborn, still trying to live it and be it and do it in the natural side of life, then I'm asking you right now to fall on your face and fall on your knees and surrender to all righteousness in your spirit, your soul, and your body. Surrender to righteousness. Surrender to God's way in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, you stubborn ones who are far from righteousness. Listen to what he's going to do. I am bringing my righteousness closer to you. I'm bringing it closer to you. It is not far off. My deliverance will not be delayed, God says, for I will set my salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Now just think about that. Think if Think about it in these terms. Zion means worship. So God says he sets his salvation in our worship. We should be singing songs about salvation. We should be calling people to the altar in our songs. We should be calling forth from the voice of God, the people to come home, to come back, to fall on their face. I'm thinking of fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Isn't that a wonderful, we call it a Christmas song. But the truth is, it is Zion crying out for God's people to fall on their knees and hear, oh hear, oh hear, have the voice of God inside of you calling people to repentance, calling people to righteousness, calling people to salvation. It's up to us worshipers. Salvation is in the worship and the glory is in Israel. And if you take that back to another revelation that God had given me earlier, he's saying that salvation is in the remnant of the remnant. And the glory is in the remnant because he calls Israel the remnant of all the nations. And then Zion is the remnant within the remnant inside of Israel. The, Zion is the second level of remnant. So think about what I just said. Within the remnant of the remnant is salvation. Ooh, what a revelation. And within the remnant is his glory. You should be housing both his glory and salvation so much so that you are outpouring it to everyone that you know. 
everyone that sees you, everyone that comes in contact with you, no matter how much trouble you're in or how much trouble there's been or how much trouble you've come through, the glory of God is still upon you and within you and salvation is yours because you are the remnant of the remnant. And God is saying, my salvation is in you and my glory is not just upon you, but it's within you coming forth. You are housing his glory. If you are housing his glory today and you understand that write it in the comments i house the glory of god i house the glory of sal- of god and salvation is within me salvation is within me and i house the glory of god isn't this a wonderful chapter When I first read it, I didn't even see this. And all of a sudden, the revelation of the Spirit, I surrendered my gray matter to the blue of my spirit man, and revelation came, and I saw the voice of the Lord in it all. I saw the power of the Spirit of God in it all, in every verse. It may be a short chapter, but it is filled with the power of God. It is filled with revelation of who you are, that God has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. He has not turned his back on you or walked away. He has a plan and a purpose for you and you will fulfill it from the moment you took your first breath to the moment you take your last. He says, I am with you. I will help you fulfill your purpose. I am walking with you. I am Oh my God, can you see what the Spirit of God is saying right now? Help me, Lord, to get it across in in feeble English words. Help me to let them see the power of the promise of who you are, that you will fulfill everything you say, Father. Father, I thank you that Rhonda and Ruth and Lisa and all those who are with me and Pamela and Michelle and Margie and Sarah and Karen, I thank you, Father, that Dana and DJ... I thank you, Father, that Laura and Zyda and Colby, I thank you, Father, that each one, have I missed anybody? Patty, there you are. Patty, I thank you, Father, that each one is walking in the glory of God. Thank you, there's Selinda and Rhonda and Mona. If I've missed you, I'm calling you all by name because I hear the Spirit of God coming forth. I'm calling each and every one of you by name for the Spirit of God is saying, you, good morning, good morning, Jean, good morning, good morning, Tiffany. I know you're there, you war and worshipers before the King of Kings and Selinda, there you are. I'm seeing all of you right now. In the name of Jesus, I am prophesying to everyone who is hearing my voice right now. God has a plan. God has a purpose. He will fulfill it in you. In you. Not just in the whole world, but in you. God will fulfill his plan and purpose in you. He's going to finish what he started in you. He's going to finish what you feel like. Oh, will this never happen? God's like, yes, it's already happened in the spirit and it's going to be finished in the natural. When you surrender the grace to the blue. When you stop having a civil war within yourself and stop trying to figure out and make it happen, but sit back and glorify God and let the glory of God and the salvation of who he is become a reality to your spirit. You will finish. You will finish this course and he will finish what he has started in you. Yes, Colby, you're birthing it right now in the name of Jesus. He will finish it. He will finish it and you will receive the glory of it for you walk in his glory and his salvation is yours in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, this is going to be an amazing day for you. Doors are going to open that have been shut for a long time and demonic doors that have tried to swing wide are going to swing shut. God's going to shut them by angelic forces. You've got three levels of angelic forces working for you. You've got the warriors through Michael and you've got the PR folks through Gabriel. That's the messengers. And you've got the one all the way over here, the the fall of Lucifer, that angelic one that came all the way straight to you, humanity. All three levels of archangel power is working in you. And if you want to know more about that, you got to come to school or register for the online school because I have a new revelation that I'm going to be sharing with my worshipers. 
I love you all. I appreciate you. I know it was a little smaller chapter today, but wow, it had a lot of power. And I won't be seeing you tomorrow or the next day, but I will see you Monday morning, bright and early and ready to go with the word of God. Please pray for our weekend. Pray for our travels. Pray for our safety. Thank you, Lord, that COVID-19 is leaving this land in Jesus' name. It's leaving the churches. It's leaving God's people. In the name of Jesus, we are pushing it back from as far as the east is from the west get away from god's people covid19 you cannot touch us no violent disease can come near us in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we thank you lord for your miracle hand and your power in the name of jesus wow again preached myself happy today. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm going to immediately, what I do is download this video and then I upload it to our YouTube channel. Please watch the repeat, the rerun, watch it again on our YouTube channel and please share it from our YouTube channel to all those you can think of. I'm believing God that we are raising up an army of those who want to study the word, who want to know the word, who want to walk in his spirit, who want to walk in his power. I am asking that you share from our YouTube channel. I believe God is raising up an army and I believe you're in it. So as Tiffany Lawler would say, warrior up, absolutely. And as my friend Deborah Cobray would say, swords drawn and shields up. Let's go to war. I love you all. I'll see you Monday.